So, let us start the slurry reactors okay. and uh, this is the last part you know we have done uh, fluidizer bed, packed bed and now this is slurry reactor, three phase reactor right. So, the objective in the beginning of course, even though first day I did not mention generally I was telling that you know we, we should understand for heterogeneous systems how do you develop the trait equation right and uh, we have taken some examples including slurry reactor at that time okay catalytic reactions, non catalytic reactions, but mainly the course has been divided into three parts. Okay. The first one is of course, introduction and all that, then we have non catalytic part which we have done and we used the same fundas what we have discussed in the first part. Okay. That means, identifying the number of steps and writing for each step the equations, eliminating the intermediate steps in all these things that is the common thing. So, when uh, I was given that award, they asked me to speak, I told the same thing. I have a beautiful quotation by some J P Epstein, I think he told that uh, you know I am not telling great teachers, I am not, not referring to me. So, the quotation is that great teachers just not only teach the subject matter, but they teach an attitude towards the subject okay, and approach to the subject without knowing myself that is what I have been doing it. Okay. So, now you have an approach to the subject, I do not know whether you understood or not but you know you have an approach to the subject. What is the approach? All heterogeneous systems, there is only one approach. Identify the system first, whether three phase, two phase, catalytic, non catalytic. Then you can imagine the entire uh, system in terms of steps. What is step one? What is step two? What is step three? So, once you have this idea in your mind, try to put on the paper how to draw the profiles. Even yesterday also we have done that. So, the moment you have drawn that profiles, then mathematics are very simple, because in the first profile what is the equation, second profile what is the equation, third profile what is the equation, then what do you get an average and a global rate. Once you have the global rate, you already learnt contacting. Fortunately, you have only two contacting continuous, one batch. right? So, you with this information of global rate, you have to just go to the correct contacting pattern, substitute and then integrate. Even yesterday we have integrated and we have taken the contacting pattern for gases, plug flow and other steps. And you got indirectly what is called an uh, uh, effective rate or a global rate, observed rate that is what, what we have um, I mean I did even yesterday for fluidizer beds. So, fluidizer beds very thoroughly used I think you know uh, I mean most of the time used in the industry that we have done thoroughly, packed beds we have done thoroughly. But before doing packet beds, we spent some time on understanding the catalyst. Okay, so that means you know what is the, uh, how do you design the size of the catalyst, for example, without having diffusional limitations, and what is effectiveness factor, what could be the temperature profiles, concentration profiles, all that that may be required for actually understanding the packet bed catalytic reactors. Not only packet bed, even slurry reactors, even fluidized bed reactors, because individual particles are there in all these. So, you should know when the individual particles whether there are any concentration gradients or temperature gradients. Our preference is you should not have temperature gradients or also you should not have any concentration gradients. Then you will get the maximum uh, a conversion or rate for the particles. The moment you have maximum rate, you will have the minimum reactor only. So, that is what is the objective. So, that is all, that is an approach, that is really an approach. Okay. So, that is what we are trying to do and the last part is slurry reactors where we have now here three phases. Okay. So, please take this one, a slurry reactor with three phases in the bracket gas liquid solid, you do not have any other no, may assume various forms like stirred tank, bubble columns, stirred, stirred tanks, bubble column, sieve tray staged reactor, but whatever the geometry, the reaction phases, the reaction phases or gas in the bracket reactant comma liquid in the bracket reactant slash inert, it can also be inert liquid bracket closure there that is liquid and solid and solid in the bracket catalyst. Yeah, the catalyst, the solid catalyst is suspended in the liquid in the presence of gas, in the presence of dispersed gas. Good. Okay. Next para you can write examples are, examples are one hydrogenation of vegetable oils. hydrogenation of vegetable oils 
Okay. So, here what is uh, gas, what is liquid, what is solid. So, this is unsaturated oils. Oh, sorry, yeah. Okay, okay. This is hydrogen, this is oil unsaturated, this one is catalyst nickel, nickel catalyst Ni. Okay. So, the another one is polymerization of polymerization of ethylene or propylene. Here we have again gas, liquid, solid. Yeah, gas is of course ethylene or propylene correspondingly. Then we have solid catalyst. I don't have. Uh, I mean, what is the? Ah, correct. Catalyst is sorry. Yeah, solid. Jiggler. Nata, right? Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, and liquid is cyclohexane. How do you know? You worked in the polymer industry or what? Uh -huh. This is uh, cyclohexane. Okay. So, that is another example. And here, the presence of cyclohexane is not to participate in the re reaction. It is only to absorb heat. It is a very good uh, heat absorber, because lot of liquid will be there. So, that can take a lot of heat. So, the third one is, I have heard of this Fischer Strop synthesis, T R O P S C H, Fischer Strop synthesis, where you have here gas, liquid, again solid. Yeah, gas is uh, no hydrogen. Or CO, hydrogen and CO, not CO. Okay, that is the one. Then we have solid iron catalyst. Iron catalyst, and liquid is hydrocarbon oil. Okay, so I mean just want to justify that you know we are not discussing something totally academic. Okay. So, slurry reactors are very widely used in industry for many, many purposes. That is what is the beauty in chemical engineering I have told you. you know. So, how many chemicals you can list? You can list thousands of chemicals. right? So, each chemical has a beautiful history, beautiful process, beautiful family of reactions, all that. So, that is why really we are very, very lucky, because you can never get satisfied with all this. And each chemical may have 10 different processes. It is not one. Maybe directly, Maybe after two steps, maybe after ten steps, all that we have to decide which is economical. That's all. That is why it is totally open field. I think you know this kind of opportunities in no other engineering you have because they don't have chemicals simply, right? And chemistry. Say, that's why we are the where chemistry stops, chemical engineering starts. Okay, this they have been telling. When I told last time also in chemistry department they were very happy. So who are the starting points for you? But I think you know, yeah, they were the starting points for us. That's true. They only make, they are making so many chemicals, and they stop only with one gram, two grams, one microgram, or maybe ten grams maximum. That's a very big scale, ten grams. But for us, ten grams, I think, is not even a scale. Okay, <laughs> so that is the problem. So it can go to tons. You know, ammonia. If you take ten thousand tons per day, ten thousand tons per day, you can just imagine in one plant. So, I think you know all engineering problems come you the moment you go for larger and larger productions. Heat transfer is a problem, fluid uh, flow is a problem, okay? uh, like everything filtration is a problem, crystallization is a problem on large scale and uh, heat maintenance is a problem on large scale again. Because I told you know I think chemistry will take most of the time the reactor is test tube. So, you will go to the Bunsen burner put there like this. Ah, reaction complete. So then he goes to uh, the gas, uh, what is the chromatograph, or some some HPLC, and then tries to find out what is the conversion. 
but can you take our ammonia reactor which is i think you know 2 meter diameter and height may be some uh, uh, 15 meters 40 45 feet then take it and then shake impossible so then that is the reason why you should now have what kind of heat transfer you should have what is the mode of heat transfer how do you remove the heat or how do you add heat so that's why i said that statement is very good where chemistry stops chemical engineering starts okay but, but it's not their business to go beyond that okay even though sometimes we go to their business to find out whether this reaction is you know can i also try that's why we have lab scale we have uh, bench scale we have pilot plant scale then we have industrial scale why why so many scales by the way ha huh? not cost particularly fluid aged bed is a deadly example for this kind of scale up because on a small scale fluid aged bed when i construct in the lab the type of bubbles i get okay and the contact between solid i get the moment i go for large scale totally it may be different so that's why in between i would like to see what is how this you know phenomena is changing when you go to very small slightly bigger slightly bigger industrial scale so you see you, you 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 would have seen no books also scale up in chemical engineering there are books scale up rules are there okay that is the problem because particularly when you have two or three phases then all these problems will come particularly when you have bubbles and drops and particles the scale up problem is automatic and in which process you don't have bubbles drops and particles in every process you have so that's why you cannot escape that's why kavya beautiful subject is chemical engineering no you don't agree no? still you are sleeping no okay good <laughs> yeah so that's why i thought you know i will just give you some ideas about this okay good so advantages you can just write advantages one the high heat capacity of the slurry is conducive to isothermality yeah and uh, number 2 is heat exchange and therefore heat recovery is very good see sometimes you can put even uh, tubes inside the slurry reactor if it is very very highly exothermic reaction okay uh, the liquid is not entirely take up this heat because the temperature of that may be increasing beyond certain value so then you can also put inside tubes and all that because it is liquid so easily heat transfer will be more so that's what is the meaning number 3 is very smart particle very small not smart particles huh? very small particles can be <laughs> of course we need smart particles very small particles can be accommodated accommodated without intraparticle diffusion correct no smaller the particle the diffusion length will reduce so without intraparticle diffusion number 4 is the reactor can be simple stir tank or autoclave stir tanks we are uh, famous no so easy for design so that is the simplicity you know the reactor can be simple for example stir tank or stirred autoclave if you are using pressure what could be the disadvantage because for everything there will be something bad ha huh? ah uh, relative velocity between the particle and then liquid is one uh, thing relative velocity because you know mass transfer may not be high the other one is product separation particularly how do you separate the particles from the product you have the catalyst particle so that's why sometimes when you use da dalda be careful in the hostel sometimes you will get nickel particles that is product separation you know rainy nickel particles sometimes you may get right so that's why you have to be careful particularly in the product separation right because those are solids gas anyway will go no problem and liquid and solids you have to separate them so that is one of the problems there okay good so now what is our approach our approach is to have the reactor first so the reactor may be yeah like this is a simple vessel then we introduce gas this is a simple pipe of course you may have sparges and all that this is gas yeah so here you have the liquid and you have the bubbles in fact so many bubbles yeah so in between you also have solid particles
Yeah. So we have uh, this is liquid. So, here I have liquid, gas may be coming out here. So, then uh, this is bubble that is gas phase, then we have here one particle I will show you slightly bigger, this is catalyst, solid. So, this is the picture. So, then if I also take one bubble for our imagination. Okay. Right. And also you have inside gas film, if I have different gases, this is gas film. Hmm. This is liquid film. because all surrounding I have liquid, right. Yeah. So, then somewhere here I have catalyst particle, right. So, then again this has a liquid film, right. Ah, this also in the liquid. So, now we know the steps the reactant gas in the bubble should first come through the gas film and this is the interface gas liquid uh, interface and this is liquid solid interface okay to have you have two interfaces so the first step is the gas should come through the gas film the reactant gas then it has to cross this interface and then go to the liquid film right then it has to cross the liquid film then it will dissolve in the bulk liquid. So, after dissolving in the bulk liquid, then it can go to the liquid film again which is surrounded uh, which is surrounding the solid particles catalyst particle and then it has to touch the surface. If the particle is not porous, then reaction occurs only on the surface or if it is porous, then the reaction again uh, you know the, uh, the reactant has to diffuse inside, but now it is in the form of not gas, but liquid correct no the gas has to dissolve in the liquid that liquid dissolved uh, reactant will go to the uh, internal pores and then it will get reacted and we are experts now how to take care of even if i have this uh, porous particle then if i know the effectiveness factor of the particle then i will know the rate of reaction in the particle okay but that reaction definitely depends on what is the concentration here 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 what is the concentration there Good. So, now this phenomena we have to now just show in the form of uh, profiles. Okay. So, that profiles let me draw. We have, uh, okay. let me write concentration profiles. So, we have this is the gas film. Then I have here liquid film, this is gas film, liquid film. What is this one? This is in fact G L interface, G L interface that line. Okay. So, here I have a bulk gas C G, I am not using any A there, that is the bulk, uh, you know, in that means I have here the bubble, right, a bulk gas and anyway afterwards we will draw the other one also. Then we have here the bulk liquid and uh, okay. I will also draw highly exaggerated, but still this is the solid, this is solid. So, this is the again liquid film, good. 
good that is the liquid film then this is bulk liquid if i remember correctly i have given this one as a separate test i think most of you also written this okay so then we have here a concentration drop this is cgi right and depending on your henry's law constant this can be cl of i and cgi cli are related with henry's law constant okay then from here again it goes to bulk and this is cl cli is interface and from here what we normally assume is that we have constant cl okay that means because of vigorous mixing this mixing can be here because of large agitation created by the bubbles or it can also be if it is not sufficient because particularly when you have heavy catalysts high dense catalysts so they they will try to settle because the buoyancy created by uh, gas bubbles may not be sufficient so that's why you also put sometimes external stirrer yeah impellers okay and that impeller will also serve as the gas distributor as well as mixer yeah it can also create very fine uh, bubbles of uh, gas okay that also possible yeah so then from here it goes to cs okay cl to cs <coughs> good so now what are the steps here of course steps uh, uh, i will write step 1 mt of gas mass transfer of gas through gas film step step 1 no sorry step 2 then we have mt of gas through liquid film of course surrounding the bubble so step 3 uh, yeah that is bulk Dis dissolving in bulk gas step 4 is that dissolved gas has to go to mass transfer of dissolved gas now dissolved gas through liquid film through mm okay liquid film and step 5 reaction on the surface okay reaction on the surface okay so we can also say if i have a porous particle then it is now diffusion through the particle right next step will be diffusion through the particle then reaction but anyway that that step can be combined as a, a step with a, a fitness factor okay good so now if when i write the equations for this which you already know the overall rate observed rate must be equal to kg mass transfer coefficient through this we introduce it here we introduce here as ag cg minus cgi where ag i will tell you ag is you have a uh, surface area yeah bubble liquid interfacial area ag please write oh, no i think we can write that later after writing all so this is also equal to under steady state conditions it is also equal to kl ag cgi minus cl correct okay which of course you can write uh, through the other equation then i also have kc ac cl minus cs huh? yeah you can later 
later you can you can substitute i will give you the another equation okay yeah so uh, you know with henry's law you can substitute that one as cli now ah, okay yeah yeah i think correct what she said is correct because you are talking about this point to this this profile not this discontinuous profile right right you are right yeah okay so now of course you can uh, add this one here cgi as h in terms of uh, you know h then you can cancel out all that so that is correct kavya thank you so then we have the next step is all these three steps mass transfer steps then we have rate of reaction step where we have uh, eta k ac cs so if i take this one as 1 2 3 right then you have the fifth equation that is uh, cgi equal to h cli that is the equation good very good so this you have already done that means eliminating all the using this eliminating all the intermediate concentrations like cs cl cl you know in terms of cg you can write this equation right so when you do that what you get is you have uh, i am skipping because you have already done this so rob equal to yeah ac cg whole thing divided by oh i have ac by ag yeah into 1 by kg that is the first resistance ac by ag h by kl plus yeah h by kc ac plus again h by eta k ac so this is the rate equation okay so this is equation number 6 uh, now i have to tell you what is ac you can please take that i think all other things we know all uh, mass transfer coefficients h is in this law constant ac is bubble liquid interfacial area per unit volume of ag ag sorry first ag equal to bubble dash liquid interfacial area per unit volume of it is, it is expressed as per unit volume of bubble free liquid okay or in the bracket slurry bubble free liquid yeah that is bubble liquid interfacial area per unit volume of bubble free liquid or bubble free slurry AC is next one. AC is external surface area of catalyst particles per unit volume of bubble free slurry. Okay, and ROB. This also please write. ROB is expressed in moles per meter cubed bubble free slurry per second. Minus R is expressed as moles because I know that I have to uh, clearly define. You know, every time when you talk about heterogeneous systems. okay we have to define otherwise you will have problem so ra is expressed in moles per meter cubed bubble slurry okay bubble free slurry uh, per second that is the rate of uh, reaction good so now uh, as usual like in the yesterday's uh, thing also this uh, this is the rate expression now overall rate now i have to find out corresponding corresponding uh, contacting pattern for example if i want to use that equation for bubble shear gas phase right so gas phase will be moving in the form of simplest assumption is moving in the plug flow so now i have to use v by f not equal to integral 0 to xa dxa by minus rob where this is the minus rob okay so now when i want to integrate for example it is a first order reaction this cg will be written in terms of conversion if it is no volume change cg equal to or or any time cg equal to cg not into 1 minus xa or x 
Okay, that you have to substitute and then integrate. You will get first order very simple ln one minus x. But all this. So when I want to use this, the next step is to find out how do you find out AC, AG, KG, KL, KC, K. K is the intrinsic rate constant. So this is an approach I have been telling you. Now you take any system. I don't have to do now gas liquid because gas liquid is already part of it. If I am stopping only here, then that will be equal to. gas liquid uh, bubble columns right so then liquid liquid but only thing is replace this gas with liquid you know extraction okay extraction with chemical reaction so then i have two phases i mean two, two different liquids then i have one uh, liquid film another liquid film then the procedure is same approach is same so that's why entire heterogeneous uh, uh, engineering even though we have not done the details details are how to find out for example mass transfer coefficient the beauty in heterogeneous system is there will be six or seven mass transfer steps and only one will be reaction step okay so all the time it is now for us our duty is to find out mass transfer coefficients and if there is a problem with heat transfer also heat transfer coefficients here we don't have to worry about heat transfer because isothermality is maintained throughout the inside the particle okay because small particles and also inside the liquid because i have large amount of liquid where all the heat is absorbed and liquid is moving very vigorously so uniformly the uh, i mean heat is distributed in the liquids you will get isothermal temperature okay good so now quickly we will try to find out how do you, yeah there is another thing here yeah, the, even though there are some correlations for kg okay most of the time this will be the it is not at all rate controlling stuff that will be the much much faster because gas gas diffusion is easiest one in the bubble i have here let us say two gases yeah, hydrogen plus some other gas hydrogen can happily go without any problem whatever gas you put there because that is the lightest okay diffusion is very very easy for that that's why you know very uh, fat people cannot move faster and very thin person can go like this like this like this like our autos on the road okay or motor bikes on the road like this you will go right that is diffusion diffusion through the packet bed particularly if you go around 9 o'clock to uh, 9 o'clock to mount road then it is a packet bed and you can see the hydrogen molecules moving through that is you know autos slightly bigger molecule and uh, two wheelers hydrogen less than hydrogen i mean less than two wheelers what equipment we have cycles but cycles uh, police will not allow them <laughs> otherwise cycles also will go through <laughs> so that's what is the diffusion there that's all so that's why that is easy so most of the time this diffusion gas gas diffusion is easiest so kg will be usually very large so this will not be present in most of the uh, slurry reactor design expressions okay kg can be safely ignored in the sense that it is not ignored kg is so large so 1 by kg that term will be zero so you can remove that then you will have only the remaining three terms okay kl Uh, particularly two terms because this is the intrinsic rate constant and uh, it depends on your ingenuity how to find out this k without any interface and interface transport processes like we have discussed no that is one of the very difficult problems but we are not done that and uh, you know so that's why most of the time we will try to express this in terms of eta phi square which is observable here also you can do that right so that was the reason why eta phi square observable we have gone observable equal to rob l square divided by de c cb yeah c a g r c b okay bulk so that is what is observable because cb you know de you know you are supposed to know de okay through correlations and all that so then the shape of the particle we know l square and also rate you are measuring okay using that k also can be calculated in fact k can be estimated using this technique that is pure interface uh, i mean uh, intrinsic constant where you measure all this then you can separate you know from uh, before converting that into eta phi square what you have done you have actually eliminated k from that if you remember the uh, original derivation so you can go back finally there and then substitute and get pure k that can be done so now the rest is kl and kc and kl mass transfer coefficient 
you see now automatically actually these last few classes are very important classes till now what you have learnt is only the background okay but unfortunately climax comes only for some time okay climax cannot be 40 classes okay okay climax will be last for 3 4 3 4 classes where all the knowledge will automatically come here okay correct no viola yeah good <laughs> so she is a teacher so that's why i asked her okay so that is why uh, for any system this is the now procedure what is that write the equation find what are the things not known and i can tell you people have spent their life only to find out kl that's all the entire life there are so many correlations if you go find out uh, in uh, slurry literature what are the correlations for kl there will be at least 50 60 that means 50 60 people minimum should have worked <laughs> because each one will have his, his own correlation not one normally professor and his student okay and if you go to some other departments each uh, paper even though it is phd work five students names are there this has become a fashion now in some science departments okay then i i don't allow that i mean i am asking as a dean that in synopsis meeting you cannot have in phd five names naturally examiner will have a doubt there who has worked out of five correct no five names means i mean you are all uh, equally supposed to contribute to that paper that's why five names are there so that's why i request H, uh, the hod and also the individual faculty members please don't put this kind of practice at least there must be one or two papers for that particular student on his or her name alone because that she can proudly say that this is my work otherwise she is one fifth of the that uh, crowd okay yeah beyond three we call crowd no so that's why i think five six are common so the, the, that's why i told you that's why at least minimum if it is single other papers you should have 50 people who would have worked there and 50 people would have worked life long that also on that so like that same thing with kc and effectiveness factors here okay so that's why what we are telling here is some of the correlations they are not the only correlations that are that are available in the world okay but some correlations which have come to the textbook means it is accepted by many other people so this information i am taking from uh, smith chemical engineering kinetics okay this information okay so now uh, mass transfer coefficient mtc kl this is bubble to liquid okay bubble to liquid yeah even in fact uh, this equation also will change the moment i see that you know yeah here so this is now horizontal almost there is no concentration gradient there so we will have there cgi and cli related directly okay so now i can express this equation in terms of cli that is another very simple thing because the reason there is it is very good uh, for me to estimate concentration of gas dissolved in the liquid is much easier than estimating the, uh, the gas concentration because gas means again hpcl something like that you know or uh, gas chromatography gc and all that one has to use okay so that is the reason that's also another simple uh, uh, thing there that will come okay good of course hcl h also will come so simply this will become hcl equilibrium because any law is in equilibrium law no? yeah good so this is kl is bubble to bubble to liquid that is the mass transfer because always when you say mass transfer coefficient your question should be immediately from where to where okay otherwise you don't know where to where good so you have a kl equation given as 0.592 this is diffusivity gas diffusivity to the power of half ma by nu to the power of 4 if i go to 6 uh, this is 7 okay so now where sigma is np rho l n cubed di to the power of 5 
by w into phi. So, this is equation 8. I think here we have to write where, oh no, okay. again where d, uh, okay, I think all we have to write, okay. first let me write d i is impeller diameter. Now, you can see that means, they have used an external impeller in the uh, reactor, okay. impeller diameter this is in uh, centimeters and uh, d sorry d this is molecular diffusivity of reactant reactant in liquid So, this is centimeter square per second, per second that is diffusivity. Then I have nu kinematic viscosity, then I have K L, or K L is of course, yeah. this is uh, M T C liquid side. units simply centimeters per second. Then we have n, small n, r p s, okay, revolutions per second. Then w, mass of slurry, mass of liquid slurry, slurry means liquid only. Yeah, this is grams. Yeah, anything else is missing? Royal, royal of course is uh, ah centimeter square per second. Yeah, what did I write? Ah, okay, units I have not written. Yeah, write it centimeter square per second. Okay, good. Yeah, so then the next row, royal is the density, and now NP. Yeah, NP has another equation. I think I have to remove this. See everything that has a beginning has an end. So, even it is so beautiful, I have written it has to go sometime. Correct, no? Only God does not have starting point, does not have end point. That is all. Okay, good. So, N P, see the problem. That is why I said, you know, lifelong these people would have worked only on this. Now, N P has another equation power number. Power number where uh, this is equal to capital P rho L liquid density n cubed. So, this is equation number uh, 9, where phi is a correction factor. phi is a correction factor given by phi equal to 1 minus 12.6 q by n d i cubed. This is equation uh, thing, where q equal to q, yeah, q this side, phi this side, q equal to gas flow in centimeter cubed per second. Okay. You see now, just to calculate K L alone, how much work would have gone, particularly when you are using impellers. Okay. So, K L equation is that, that is related to sigma, sigma is there uh, in that equation 7. Now, to calculate sigma, you also need phi. So, phi and n p. 
yeah so np has an another equation phi has another equation so that's why you really scold me if i give this in the examination okay correct no prabhu yeah why because you don't want to learn you really appreciate me <laughs> we really appreciate me if i give this in the examination because wonderful problem because it's a real problem okay good so this is one correlation there is another very simple correlation where you like it yeah p is power yeah not it comes yeah x per second so oh, that has not come right two so p equal to power x per second anything else missing yeah so that's why we have another equation for uh, examinations okay <laughs> so another equation for examination is that don't use agitator then you don't have to worry about power number rpm rps and all that so without agitation in the absence of that is mechanical agitation okay so without or in the absence of mechanical agitation in the absence of mechanical agitation you have kl equal to mu l liquid all rho l and of course d diffusivity so this whole to the power of 2 by 3 equal to 0.31 delta rho that means rho l minus rho g into mu l g by rho l square so this is the equation uh, 11 okay this kl can be used to find out the mass transfer if you don't have mechanical agitation if you simply bubbles are going with buoyancy right good where all the other things we know no royal we know mu l we know uh, mu l is the viscosity of the liquid that uh, delta rho is the density difference g we know the d is the diffusivity all that fine excellent good so that is the one for kl so now you have kc kc we are saved because we don't have uh, that we can fit in the form of equation but we have a graph sherwood number versus what should be the other number for kc so this is in fact one and number two is mtc kc liquid to yeah particle solid okay yeah actually this is the real life right uh, actually real life you know to give an example uh, you know all romance will be only for one year before marriage or after marriage okay afterwards reality this is reality and you know what has romance beautifully writing this step equal to this step this step equal to this step this step equal to this step okay and finally you have that equation that is the reality so now that equation contains unfortunately this kl kc k eta and all that so you have to go for only correlations where there is no romance in correlations correct no where is the romance in correlations because i think you know someone has to really work very very hard and after working maybe 5 years 6 years for phd so finally you will give one equation okay <laughs> so that is why all chemical engineering design people won't like because there is no romance simply absence of romance whereas i think the other steps are yeah for example drawing this and then uh, writing these steps eliminating the intermediate concentrations okay so then even if you don't like and then if you hate that one as romance you are not good for anything so that's why you have to either like this or like that or like both okay so you don't have a choice now so for kc we should have another correlation so that correlation um, Uh, this again agitating speed and all that please take this this interaction i think we will have yeah. okay the relative velocity between particle and liquid determines the extent to which converge uh, convection increases the sherwood number 
above that for stagnant conditions comma that is above you tell me the value above dash i know you have not understood what i said there <laughs> you have simply written there without understanding the relative velocity between the particles and the liquid determines the extent to which convection increases the sherwood number above that for stagnant conditions that means for stagnant conditions what is sherwood number excellent about 2 that 2 is the minimum basic right so when you have the, i told you no example come with beautiful scent and then sit here now this is still there is no movement of any gas so the smell comes by diffusion okay so then if someone puts the fan behind then that comes convection so now the total mass transfer is that uh, fan speed convection plus diffusion okay the diffusion is 2 sherwood number equal to 2 that is a beautiful derivation i don't know whether anyone of you have done it in mass transfer and also heat transfer also that comes that comes so beautifully okay so that is the one and uh, the okay the basis for correlating kc as a function of agitation speed and particle size is based on you heard of this fellow's name kolmogorov transport phenomena or fluid mechanics people would have told turbulence kolmogorov's theory of isotropic turbulence ah it, it would have come in other uh, subjects also kolmogorov's theory of isotropic turbulence that is the basis according to this theory the reynolds number is defined according to this theory yeah the reynolds number is defined as r e equal to dp to the power of 4 by nu cubed whole to the power of half for xi greater than dp okay uh sigma you know sigma is again same thing what we have used there okay sigma is in ergs per second per gram that is same as in equation 8 and xi ed size xi is ed ed size size of the ed and this is valid of course yeah xi greater than dp okay so yeah otherwise that means if you have xi less than dp reynolds number equal to sigma dp to the power of 4 this is 1 by 3 instead of 1 by 2 where it is size also one can find out that is xi equal to nu cubed by sigma whole to the power of 1 by 4 so if i write equations this will be 12 13 14 okay good so i think this uh, i have to remove now yeah so here you have a graph relating the sherwood number and uh, Reynolds number, Reynolds number defined in that fashion. This is Reynolds number. That is equation twelve and thirteen, depending on Zay values. Okay, so then here I have Sherwood number. Um, okay, actually this is Sherwood number by. what is this number mu l by rho l d schmidt number so this is to the power of 3 1 by 3 to the power of 1 by 3 sherwood number by that is plotted so here this is a log log scale i have here point 1 starting somewhere here 1 and 10 this side we have again point 1 1 10 100 see so this is another way of defining reynolds number so you have approximately this is point 2 point 4 point 
point six, point eight, of course, log scale only. Yeah, then again here I have two, four, six, and ten. Yeah, you will have a line somewhere near four. It starts like this. It goes. That is the correlation. Not exactly straight line, but slightly. This way, that way, it goes there. Yeah. So this is the correlation. That means, um, if you want to design, then I have to give you this. Uh, even if you want to calculate, if I give the problem, I have to supply this information, and then first calculate Reynolds number. If it is 10, go there. Read and uh, this coordinate, you know. So that is Sherwood number is again defined as K C here. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. So that value you have to substitute K C D P by yeah D diffusivity again. Okay. So using that you can calculate what is K C from this. Good. Yeah. So that is the correlation and uh, good. What else is now? Everything we will know. of course int uh, intrinsic rate equation only other one left but i think that you have to use some other technique to find out that we don't have then you know some kind of simplifications right that equation where you have three resistances is that you have to go for the you have to go for tiffin or what ha huh? okay so some simplifications for that equation where you have rob equal to okay tell me that equation i have ac H C L equilibrium. I substituted there. Okay, already. That's correct, no? Anything else missing there? Huh? Yeah. So this whole thing divided by one by K J. I am dropping out. So then we will have A C by A G H by K L plus H by K C uh, A C K C plus we have H by again A C will come no yeah A C eta K so that is the equation and most of the time uh, this equation if I say fifteen I have not written this equation earlier okay yeah so this equation most of the time this term also is neglected. Do you know why? The last one. Neglected in the sense the k must be large value. Why? Yeah. Most of the time this ran in nickel and all that, and that too very very fine powder. What you use? So. very active catalysts only are used for slurry reactor most of the time so that is the reason why 1 by k value or k value will be very very large so this term also will disappear so finally what you have all the time in the design will be hh also will get cancelled ac cl equilibrium divided by ac by ag 1 by kl plus h will go A C K. That is the equation. This is the most practical equation. Most of the time, people can use that. Okay. So now again, further simplifications. Because as an engineer, you should be able to simplify things as uh, you know easy as possible, so that you know your design will be the simplest, right? So you also have something in your mind. Uh, I mean, uh, something that means if I am taking very fine particles. very fine particles large number of very fine particles then the ratio ac by ag will be very very large ac by ag okay so then can i neglect this also ac is what by the by external surface area of catalyst per unit volume of bubble free slurry okay do you know how do you find that gas is much volume i mean if i want you to have a, a develop an equation for that ac surface area of external surface area 
per unit volume of the particle multiplied by volume of the particle and divided by volume of the slurry. Okay? Anyway, I think you would have not got that, but I will tell you because that is also how you find out A C then we can discuss that A C is surface area per unit volume of bubble free slurry. Okay? So, surface area per unit volume of slurry liquid, okay? liquid I am writing. Okay? Good. So, now uh, this can be also written surface area per volume of particles total surface area per total volume of particles yeah into volume of particle divided by same thing volume of liquid what is this surface area per unit volume of particle i can multiply by n and multiply by n there number of particles total volume and surface area what do you get there pi by or uh, 6 by 6 by dp good so this is 6 by dp and this one for volume of particles mass divided by density ms by rho s m s by rho s. So, this is what is this you know surface area per unit volume of the particles. So, the corresponding equation is 6 m s divided by rho s d p, where m s is normally taken as directly if you want to use that equation m s is weight per unit volume of the bubble free slurry. Very simple no, to get that. Ah, volume of liquid. This one is volume of liquid, right? We are not substituting that, that comes by definition. So, in between only we substituted volume of particles and yeah, volume of particles and volume of particles. This this can get cancelled. Okay? Yeah. So, that is the, that means, if I know what is the total amount of solids I am taking total mass, if I know the density, if I know diameter of the particle, I can calculate A C. Yeah, Kavya has doubt. Huh? It's not dimensionally yeah, tell me which one is different. Ah, this is no M S is the weight of the single particle, rho S is the weight of single, uh, sorry density of single particle. So, that will be the volume of particle right. Volume of liquid by definition I am keeping as it is. Huh? Where is per unit volume? Yeah, A C differentiates itself per unit volume. I mean that is what in the beginning itself we have written only per unit volume of liquid right. Yeah, this is simply yeah, here volume of particles and this is also volume, but I know surface area per unit volume of particle. Yeah, you mean is there any problem? Not able to get that. Where is volume of liquid? Because I am interested here, see I introduced here volume of particles, right. Per unit volume, per unit volume, because the definition here is surface area per unit volume of liquid. See, normally what we will do, what we have to do is that you know volume of uh, uh, the surface area per unit volume of particle we use. You know, normally surface area per unit volume of the particle only we are talking. But the definition given here is surface area per unit volume of liquid. But this I can also write surface area per unit volume of particle multiplied by volume of particle divided by same volume, volume of the liquid. So, that way I can use this equation to calculate A C. Similarly, can you 
also find out uh, interfacial area of the bubble per unit volume of bubble free slurry same thing same technique but there you cannot use the density so a g is surface area per same thing again volume of liquid yeah which can be written as surface area what is mb that we don't know here you get another beautiful term. see this is surface area of bubble divided by volume of bubble okay if i am inserting in between right so surface area n number of the bubbles divided by n number of bubbles also that will be simply simply 6 by db then this side i have to write n into volume of bubble kavya this side i have to write n into volume of bubble okay bubbles and uh, what is that i think volume of bubbles i will simply put as vb yeah is what hold up so that is why finding out gas hold up is also very important in slurry reactors okay that vb is the hold up where we have now here 6 by db into vb volume of bubbles and volume of bubbles by this will be hold up okay so this is that means if you know the volume this volume of bubble by volume of the liquid will be hold up please write that volume of bubble by volume of liquid will be the hold up this is another equation then we have to substitute now what is the volume of the i mean what is the hold up of the liquid good okay good so now we assume that we have we know this ac and ag because once i give you what is the hold up of this also can be written in terms of 6 dp into 1 minus or i mean epsilon not 1 minus epsilon b in the normal term epsilon is the void edge okay so that is nothing but hold up hold up of the liquid okay so now this is another uh, uh, this may be equation uh, 17 this is equation 18 so now again i uh, know another simplifications if i am finding out that i have large number of small particles catalyst particles so that means i can neglect now uh, this term because ac is very large so 1 by ac because large number of very fine particles so that means this surface area is very very large the surface area is very very large i cannot neglect this but i can only neglect this right okay good so if i do that what is the rate expression i get go to r o r o b if ac is is very large naturally ac by ag also will be large so in this equation we can neglect only this then what is r o b K L into excellent K L into A G into C L. That is what. So now what I am trying to say is A G contains what. Now everything has focused now on A G, but if I want to calculate A G, what I should know? This is not D P. This is D B. hold up and diameter of the bubble so i am just trying to pose the problems to you okay so now hold up in the that's the reason why in most of the time in heterogeneous systems we are worried about hold up i have been telling this long time 
in hydrodynamic studies, we always try to find out what is the hold up. Correct, no? Many times I have told that. So, these are the problems now. You are now really facing that. Right? So, when I want to use this equation, all my focus, A c is there, but all my focus is only A g, but A g now depends on d b and how accurately I measure d b is important thing for me. How do you measure bubbles in uh, slurry? If I ask you in aquarium, uh, you have uh, you know fish is moving, but gas bubbles also are moving. If I ask you to find out what is the diameter of that, how do you find out? Bubble free volume, uh, we subtract that with the volume. Yeah, that is the most uh, you know engineering way of doing things. But what are the assumption? Constant All the bubbles are same. Okay, <laughs> but bubble size. But clearly, you know that the bubbles are not same. That's what you know. I know someone told centipede has uh, hundred legs, but anyone counted that the centipede has hundred legs? Okay. Similarly, here you know that, that why I'm telling is we believe many things. So one of the simplest way of finding out bubble size is that you measure the volume without introducing the gas of the liquid. Then introduce the gas because gas has volume, so it will get uh, volume will increase. So subtract that increased volume minus this liquid volume. Then assume that you have bubble size. Uh, no, um, yeah, uniform bubbles. Then how do you calculate bubble size? No. Ah, oh, spherical bubbles. So, how many number? Whatever number you have, whatever number you can, you, you can get some other value. See, so diameter. I have to. Then all that volume now increase in volume. I will say that I have thousand bubbles, and then each bubble has one millimeter. Huh? Ah. What is the use of that? So you have only one bubble. I, I, I don't have one bubble. I have thousands of bubbles inside. So what do you do with the Taylor bubble experiment? Taylor bubble experiment is to find out the characteristics of the bubble. Okay. But here, in the presence of so many large bubbles, how do I find out the volume? I mean the, the size. So normally what we do is that's why we do most of the experiments in uh, you know transparent perspex columns or glass columns. We will now approximately find out, maybe you know, by looking carefully, observing. Uh, okay, this may be five mm. Okay, all the all may not be five mm. You see how many approximations are involved. Particularly, Abhino was asking yesterday, you know, some question, because engineering is approximation. Like that in bubbling bed model also, there are many many approximations. Okay, but now, no no no, I am a scientific engineer, not engineering scientist. Okay, now I want to find out exactly the bubble size. That is very the challenge for you now. First of all, you have to find out how many bubbles are there, and you find out how many you know bubbles are with one mm, two mm, five mm, ten mm. So that means you are talking about bubble size distribution. Challenging task for chemical engineers. Even now we don't have a good method. Even now we don't have a good method. It is approximate. That's why there are many, many challenging problems. I say, and people live with bubbles, drops, and even how do you find out drop uh, sizes in liquid-liquid extraction? Thousands of people are working on liquid-liquid uh, extractions in industry. They are producing wonderful products after extraction, but still we don't know how do you measure drop size. Same thing here, bubble size. Only we are sure about particle size. That's all. I think you know because particles are not changing in time. Okay, uh, so size-wise, unless you have tremendous attrition and all that, so particles are the things only we can characterize. And there are many, many theories. I don't know. You, you are not in DD, no? None of you are in DD. All of you in BTEC. Okay. So they have a course called multi-phase systems. Okay. I think MTech you also have that course. Yeah, entire multi-phase system is only to talk about bubbles, drops, particles. That is what is entire multi-phase. Okay, so every time, what do you say? All this finding out uh, holdups, because each system will have a different holdup, right? Bubble liquid, uh, no, gas liquid columns different, and gas liquid solid different, fluid aged bed different, packed bed different. So like that, you can list out, you know, um, rotary kilns different. What is the normal holdup we use in rotary kiln? 
because luckily they are solids, they are not changing. So, that is why you said that it must be less than 10 percent. Yeah. Okay. So, why can't you use 90 percent? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kavya, why can't you use 90 percent? Can't how, uh, how, how, huh? Yeah, mixing will not happen, and uh, you know th there will be contacting. But I think the way you expect particle has to, uh, you know, li will be lifted to the top and then fall again, lifted to the top again, fall. So like that kind of beautiful motion is not there. So that's why 10 percent or less than 10 percent is fantastic. Same thing, even with you know centrifuging. If you go to that level of RPM, RPM also only three four. If you go to 100 where centrifuging happening, then what happens? All the particles stick to the walls as if it is part of the wall. So, where is the contact? All the gas will go in the central annular region and uh, very small contact will be there. But whereas, when you have this normal method what you are operate with low RPM and low hold up, goes, falls, goes, falls, there is now more residence time for the exposure and good exposure. Okay? So, 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 so all uh, chemical engineering equipment is really a thrill to design, even though there is no romance after derivations, okay? because correlation may be boring, but still that is what is life, that is what is life. And after you marry, I think you remember my words, it is routine, it is routine every day get up, take breakfast, go to work, afterwards come and if you are in very good mood, fight with the wife, if you are not in good mood, go to the room and then sleep. So, all these kinds of that is routine, routine, routine till we die. Same thing here also correlations, 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 correlation. Even though we develop theory, 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 every paper has a new theory, but how much of that is used in chemical engineering equipment design is very, very small. That is why you have to appreciate chemical engineering. Whereas, any theory, every theory developed by computer science engineers, electronic engineers is thrilling, immediately it is applied to the but mechanical engineering, chemical engineering is not that easy. Mechanical engineering is particularly, it is not that exciting because they do not have chemicals. They do not have so much equipment. They have only one equipment called IC engine. Okay? Only outside shape will change. Okay? Bonnet may change or uh, you know that front uh, design may change, tires may change or top they may put uh, that ladder or may not put ladder. That is all what they can do. Engine is always engine. I think 1800s they invented, it is same thing not much improvement. Only thing now we are trying to do is that put better petrol or put uh, you know some oil, uh, put some uh, this one alcohol. So, and then trying to find out how the car goes. Okay? So, that is all I mean uh, the other than that even uh, aeronautical engineers their entire life is only one engine. Correct no? Jet. That is all. They may be trying on that variations, but for us even one process there are thousands of variations, just one process. Packet bed alone how many ways you can design, fluid edge bed how many ways you can design. Okay? So, you, you can try to put you know somewhere input, some, somewhere inlet, somewhere outlet, a multi inlet, multi outlet, all the things you can try, just to get good efficiency. Okay? So, that is why the, this is the equation and now this AJ to find out we need correlation, that one correlation I will give you for dB, there are many. d b correlation. Yeah. So, now I just want to you know trying to tell you the connections you know one after the other. So, d b now because this a j depends on d b right. So, now we should have a d b correlation. So, 1.35 u by g delta by delta u square rho l divided by sigma l to the power of half into rho l delta g no sigma l not rho l rho l whole to the power of 1 by 3 where Simplest the thing of course is d b bubble diameter centimeters ok. 
okay and we have u gas velocity yeah this is again you know particularly for this is only for porous plate please remember porous plate is different than perforated plate so if you have perforated plate you will have different correlation okay yeah so ug is gas velocity through porous plate centimeters per second then we have delta four diameter four diameter of uh, porous plate four diameter of porous plate then uh, sigma l here is used as surface tension surface tension that is x per centimeter surface tension yeah so that is the one x per centimeter and then you have rho l of course density density of liquid grams per centimeter cube yeah anything else all those things are covered huh? oh times per second not centimeter no second or centimeter centimeter only length ah dyne 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 okay so like that you know it goes on and on good okay fine so i think the next part is uh, sridhar sorry i think uh, it may take some more time but you don't fall no because no there no breakfast <laughs> okay so good now we have sufficient information now for the rate expression the, you know how to derive the general rate expression and how to get the constants that are involved kl kc and all that kg and all that so then you also know how to find out that uh, ag ac all that information you have now now it is application to slurry reactor so application to slurry reactor this is very simple it's not that difficult good so we will have the slurry reactor design okay i will write here design we have the slurry reactor okay i think maybe let me close this and then put so you have bubbles yeah we have particles and we have liquid right so i am taking now that one thing is that we can also take based on liquid phase because we want to design now right so your interesting phase may be liquid if it is liquid that is equivalent to batch liquid and you have the rate expression what is the equation t by c r not equal to it is liquid integral 0 to x a d x a by minus r a this minus r a is that if it is plug flow for so uh, gas so solid is in batch but solid is a catalyst so we are not going to try anything on that so when it is gas gas one assumption is that it is moving in the form of plug flow so then we will take a small because again that approach only i am trying to tell you this is delta z this is z plus dz this is z that is delta z okay so in a simple manner if i have uh, yeah cross section area a when you have or otherwise if i write in our normal plug flow fashion ideal plug flow fa plus dfa okay now i have to write the material balance moles entering will be fa right moles entering will be fa because you know that's why i am not writing that that is input equal to output is fa plus 
d of a please remember it is moles per second all the time. Savita, moles per second yesterday also we did the same moles per second plus it is a continuous reactor where there is no accumulation for the gas, gas is moving continuously. So, then uh, that accumulation equal to 0 plus reaction. What is reaction minus okay, R O B, okay, I have not written okay, the same thing into D V. This D V can be, yeah, this is D V uh, which can be A into D Z, A C into D Z. So, now tell me what is the equation you get here? Oh, time to stop. Huh? F A, F A will get cancelled. So, minus F A equal to, yeah, can you tell me the integral expression? You can leave it as uh, you know, length you do not have to write. In terms of V also, we can leave it as it is. V by, this will give me V by. Uh, integral, integral expression I am asking, uh, d x a by that is the one. So, now this volume is not simple volume in uh, meter cube, but that is volume of liquid, uh, volume of bubble free liquid. Why? Because here what we have used is volume of bubble free liquid. This balance what you are writing, this must be only bubble free liquid. That is the only thing you have to take care of in uh, heterogeneous systems. What is that corresponding one what you are writing? Okay? So, because our uh, R O B is defined as the volume, I mean moles converted per unit volume of bubble free slurry per time. Right? So, when I am multiplying to get moles per, okay, if I write moles per time, I have to multiply only by that corresponding V. That is the only thing which you have to be careful when you are writing the material balance for heterogeneous systems. So, this is again nothing but your ideal plug flow equation, that is what I have been telling. Huh? Ah, okay. Minus R O B, good. Now, if it is a first order like this system, what we have? So, this C L okay, correspondingly can be converted into 1 minus x A, okay, C A naught into 1 minus x A, then that you substitute and then we can integrate. That is all, you know, that is why I told you, in fact, contacting is much, much easier to remember. Right? Whereas, it is heterogeneous uh, reaction rates, which will give you hell. Already, this is one hell. Okay? Yesterday, another hell, because fluid aged bed. And uh, sometime before, packed bed, another small hell, because in packed bed, things are not moving, except gas. Okay? So, that is why, and we have not done uh, again you know moving bed, moving bed again will be another hell. Okay? But what you have to remember is the mass transfer coefficients and the heat transfer coefficients will be changing the moment how the phases are moving change. The moment of phases will determine mass transfer coefficients and heat transfer coefficients. That is the reason why for each and every equipment you have different mass transfer coefficients, different heat transfer coefficients. Whereas, reaction rate is same for any system reaction rate that will not change. Okay? So, that is the reason why heterogeneous systems are very, very, very beautifully I mean exciting things and uh, to close we will go back to we started with this. I told you know for anything which starts uh, which has everything that starts with a beginning will also end. So, now we will end here with the same diagram. So, this is reactor input output kinetics contacting. So, here I have a batch P f oh, continuous sorry continuous then we have P f m f here we have physical chemical. So, performance equation is yeah, 
output output okay shaker remember is a function of kinetics contacting So, that is the one and now of course, here what you are trying to, to say is that we are only talking about all the time ideal <coughs> contacting. So, the moment you have non ideal contacting this equation will change again. So, that will be more and more complications only other than that there is nothing. Okay?